Hello, good morning dear children. How are you all? Hope you are doing great and safe at home. Welcome to the class 8 second language English. Children, do you know today is going to be a special day for all of us. Do you know why? Because we are going to see one of the beautiful poems in class 8 second language English that is, can you guess? Yes, the poem number 3, No Men Are Foreign, composed by James Kirkup. Children, before gearing up to this poem, let me ask you a few questions. Are you all ready? Yes, now you need to guess and answer these questions. Are you all ready? Let me see the first question. Where do the following people go to? Here, which people they are talking about? People who want to earn more money. Where do they go? Just guess and keep ready answers with you. And students who wants to pursue higher studies, where do they go? Have we thought of anything? Yes, people who wants to earn more money, student who want to pursue higher studies, they go to abroad or foreign countries. I have few more questions for you. How do we address the people of America, Africa, Australia and China? We will give you one clue now. How do we address the people of India? We address the people of India as Indians, right? Like that, how do we address the people of America, Africa, Australia and China? Any guess? Wait for the answer. Then, which is the native land of these people? Which is the native land of these people? Can you guess? Which people we are talking about? Here comes. Look at them. Can you observe these pictures? Look at how beautiful these kids are. How they are smiling at us, right? Where can we find these people? Yes, we can find them in the foreign country. Their native land is foreign country. Here, Americans from America, Australians from Australia, Africans from Africa and Chinese from China, Japanese from Japan. We call them as foreigners, Americans, Australians, Chinese, Japanese, we call them as foreigners, right? Then who are foreigners children? Who are foreigners? Yes, she is ready to say the answer. Are you all ready to say the answer? Who are foreigners? Let's see people from a different country, belonging to a different culture, having a different colored skin, body or language. Hope you got the answer. Who are foreigners? People from a different country, belonging to a different culture, having a different colored skin, body or language. Children, have you ever met or seen a foreigner? Were you xenophobic at the time? Do you know the word xenophobic here? Xenophobic, here it's an adjective and it acts also as a noun, xenophobia. What does it mean? Xenophobia is a fear and hatred of strangers or foreigners. Hope you are not xenophobic because, because, can you tell me? Because we are all human, aren't we? We are all not xenophobic because we are all human. Yes, we are humans. Then children, hope you have heard this. Vasudaiva Kutumbakam. The world is a family. What is this uh, Vasudaiva Kutumbakam? Vasudaiva Kutumbakam is a Sanskrit phrase which means one word, one family. See, as we thought of this Vasudaiva Kutumbakam, one word, one family, then who is foreigner? No men are foreign children. Here the poet James Karkap discuss the same thing. Let us see about James Kirkup. James Kirkup is one of the best prolific writers of English. He was born on 23rd April 1918. It means he lived up to 10th May 2009. He was a great poet, translator and a travel writer. Also, James Kirkup wrote over 30 books which included autobiographies, novels and plays. And he was internationally known for writing haiku and tanka. Do you know the haiku and tanka? 
Haiko and Tanka are the writing skills which he has got. That is a great art. So internationally he is known for it. Here I am going to give you the recitation of the poem, No Men Not Foreign, written by James Kirkup. Children, please open the page number 57. Are you all ready? Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. They too aware of sun and air and water, are fed by peaceful harvest, by wars long winter starved. Their hands are ours, and in their lines we read, a labor not different from our own. Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be won by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. Let us remember whenever we are told to hate our brothers. It is ourselves that we shall dispose, betray, condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other, it is the human earth that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no countries strange. Yes, children, how was the recitation? It was awesome, right? Yes. Children, while reciting the poem, we have come across many new words, right? Are you all ready to hear the new words? Yes, I know you are so eager to know the new words. First one, children, when we recited the poem, we come across this word, starred. What does it mean? To go without food, to die from lack of food. See, here is the one living example. In the pandemic of COVID-19, many a labor starved to death, isn't it? Second one, harvest. What is harvest? The season when crops are gathered from the fields. See how these two kids are gathering crops from the fields. Farmers celebrate harvest in the time of Makara Sankranti. Third one, we have come across that is outrage. Outrage means that extreme anger or shock Look at this woman, what they are doing? They are protecting the trees. Why? They are opposing or they are showing their extreme anger. To whom? Against the log cutters. Many ecologists express their outrage against log cutters in the forest. So next word is defile. What does it mean? Make something impure. Look at this picture, how this water has been defiled. So what we should do, children, we should not defile pristine water. Have you heard this word pristine? Pristine is nothing but clean or fresh. So we should not defile the pristine water. Please save the water, please preserve the water, children. Children, here that emoji says like this, what does it mean? That means to criticize or to disapprove or to oppose. Shall we see in the sentence or usage? The government condemns all acts of terrorism. 
Here one more for you. See how beautiful this picture is. B E T R A Y. Betray. What does it mean? Deceive. Look at this, that fellow. He is giving shake and his another hand is doing. Yes, this is what called as betray. We should not betray our friends. Right children? Yeah, we have recited the poem. We have come across new words. Those were strange words, but now very familiar to us. Now let's analyze the poem written by James Kirkup. No men are foreign. Look at that boy. What is he thinking about? Let's see what is he thinking about? He might be thinking about the title. Let's see what the poet says about the title here. The title means that no man belong to another country. He says all men are same, all men are equal. And also here in this poem, he gives the concept of universal brotherhood. Yes, now we are in the first stanza. What does the first stanza tells about? The first stanza talks about oneness of journey. What is this oneness of journey? Look at the first line. Remember, no men are strange, no country is foreign. Here the poet is attempting to remove all the borders from the nations, which has been erected in all the countries to divide the countries. So here also poet says, entire hearth is one, we are all same. No one is foreign, no one is strange, he is saying that. And in the second line, he tells about beneath all uniforms a single body breathes. He says all human beings are same beneath their uniforms. And when we go to the third line, like us, the land our brothers walk upon. Children, here we should appreciate the poet. Do you know why? Because he calls other nations of the people as brothers. So we need to appreciate the poet here. And also he says, the hearth is same for everyone. We walk upon this hearth and we buried in it too. So here the first stanza, he talks about oneness of journey. Let's get into the second stanza. What does it second stanza says about? It says about oneness of efforts. Let's see what are the oneness of efforts. See they, the second stanza begins with the they. Here they refers to the people of other nation. They too aware of sun and air and water. They aware of sunlight, air and water as we get them in the equal measure. And also they are fed by the peaceful harvest. Nature gives them rice, wheat, vegetables to everyone, right? See they too fed by the peaceful harvest. Are they to starve at the time of wars and winter season. And look at their hands, uh, ours and in their lines we read. They do have the same hands, they do the hard work. Look at the labors, they do, are, they, they do have the same labors in their country who does the hard work. When we go to the third stanza, here he talks about oneness of emotions. Here, remember they have eyes like ours that we wake. Yes, that is what he says. We should remember that everybody in the world has same appearance like us. So we should respect each and every one of them. And also he says, they sleep, they awake as we do. And also he says, one of the powerful weapons what is that powerful weapons? That is what the love. Why is mentioning the powerful or strength weapon? Because by the love we can win anything or we can win anybody. And in every land, one thing is common. That is what the common life. If we understand and recognize their feelings, then there will be no war. So that is what he says, oneness of emotions. When we talk about the fourth stanza, he talks about oneness of hatred. See, when someone tells us to hate our brothers or hate our enemies, we should not do. Why? If we hate others, it is nothing but we are hating ourselves. And also, if we hate others by listening to others, what happens? That we shall dispose us or deprive ourselves. We are going to betray ourselves. We are going to cheat ourselves. We are going to condemn ourselves. So we should not hate our others. So here his poet is saying that we should come out from such negativity, hating others, disposing others, betraying others and condemning others. And also he tells, remember, we should keep in mind that 
who take arms against each other, who fights against others. What happens then? He tells in the fifth stanza, what happens? If you fight against others, if you hate others, it is the human heart that we are going to defile. See how hearth is clean, how hearth is pure. We are going to defile them. How? By this war. In warfield, we use many explosions. By that, we are going to make this earth defile. And also, he talks about the smoke or the dust which gets from the war. That outrages the innocence of air which is everywhere. So, we must not be in the war. If you are in the war, we are going to defile this beautiful hut. Dear children, remember no men are foreign and no country strange. So, that is what he tells in the poem. So, here there is a poet's wish. Let us listen. What is the poet's wish? Here, with all these things, the poet wants to give us a message that we should not indulge in a war. Nobody should involve in the war because they are our brothers and sisters. Finally, he ends the poem by writing the first line in reverse and saying that, remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. Then children, we analyzed the poem, even we recited the poem. Now, let me check your understanding. Let us all answer these following questions. Are you all ready? Yes, children, here is the first question. What does the poet remind us of in the first line of the poem? Have you thought any answer? Here it goes. In the first line of the poem, he, the poet reminds us that no men are strange and no countries are foreign. Isn't it? Yes. Look at these soldiers. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes. This line can be seen in first stanza, second line. Here, what uniforms do you think the poet is speaking about? Any guess? Look at that. The uniforms refers to those worn by soldiers belonging to different countries. Beneath all uniforms lies the same human body. Isn't it children? Here see, how does the poet suggest that all people on earth are the same? Can you guess? Just now we have talked about that. Look at that. We belong to one human race. All people in this earth or universe belong to one human race. We walk on the same earth, isn't it? Upon death, we will lie in our graves in the same earth. We all enjoy the bounties or the gifts of nature like sunlight, air and water, which is common to everyone. How many common features can you find in stanza 2? If you open the stanza 2, we can find many common features. What are they? The first one, we enjoy the bounties of nature, the gifts of nature. We eat good food during peace time. We start during war and in winter season. And also, we have similar hands which we use for doing labor. Isn't it children? In stanza 3, find five ways in which we are alike. Alike is nothing but which we are same. Let's see. First one, we walk. See that how the kid is walking. We walk, we breathe, and we have eyes and we have common life, we walk with our hands. Isn't it children? Look at these labels. They are also same in our country and in the na other nations. And here is a beautiful question for you. How can we win over the strength of our opponents? Any guess? We can win over the strength of our opponents by the powerful weapon. What is that? The strength of our opponents can be won over by love because Everybody responds to love and appreciate the feeling of brotherhood. Then what according to the poet are we doing when we hate others? Look at this Sammu, what she is doing here? She is saying something, look at that, spread love not hate. So what according to the poet then are we doing when we hate others? According to the poet, when we will be disposing ourselves, we hate others. That leads to our own destruction and downfall. So, here the poet says, we should not hate anyone. What are two bad effects of war? Please read lines 16 to 19 and answer children. Are you looking it out? Lines number 16 to 19. Yes, here in this he says, 
If you fight or war against each other, it affects earth and air, the two bad effects are. Can you think? The first one, the earth and air will become impure. What is it another one? Hatredness between brothers increases. These are the two bad effects of war. We must not indulge in the war that he says. Then children, you need to answer this. What is that? Who are they then? Here that they refers to foreigners. Who are they then? They are not our foreigners. They are our brothers and sisters. Right children? Yes children. Whatever we do, we seek appreciation from each and everyone. Right? Here also we need to appreciate someone. Whom to appreciate? We need to appreciate the poem. No man or foreign. We can appreciate the poem by recognizing or identifying the literary devices used in the poem. Let's see what are the literary devices used in the poem. Yes, literary devices are can be figure of speech. Here, stanza 1 to the stanza 5, there is no rhyming word. Can anybody find the rhyming words in the stanza 1 to the stanza 5? No, there is no rhyming word. Then what it is? So, here, there is no rhyming scheme. The entire poem is written in free verse. Got my point? Yes, children. We have one more literary devices in this poem. That is what? Alliteration. Let us learn new thing. Let us learn new device. What is that? Alliteration. What is alliteration? The repetition of a consonant sound in two or more closely placed words is called alliteration. The instances of alliteration in the poem are, look at that instances. So, in stanza one, second line we can see, Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes. There you can see body and breathes. It has a sound of consonant in the beginning. So, that has been repeated. So, this can be in the alliteration. So, in stanza 2 also we have wars, winters. So, this can be alliteration. So, these are the two instances used in stanza 1 and stanza 2 for example. So, we have still more alliterations to study here. See, alliterations always like a tongue twisters. Look at these examples you can come to know. See how beautiful tongue twister it is. So, it is a tricky one. Let me see how you are going to say with me. First, I will read out for you. Greg gave Greta grapes from Grand Pass. Once again, we will repeat for you. Greg gave Greta grapes from Grand Pass. Now, can you say with me at least three times? Yes, say with me children. Greg gave Greta Graves from Grand Pass. Greg gave Greta Graves from Grand Pass. Greg gave Greta Graves from Grand Pass. My God, do you feel this is difficult? Nothing is difficult for you children. Go ahead, I will help you. I thought I thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought. Shall we say together? Yes, say with me. I thought I thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought. Say once again. I thought I thought, but the thought I thought wasn't the thought I thought. Hope you are identifying the alliteration, the sound of the consonant which has been repeated more than two or three times is called as alliteration. Shall we go further? Yeah. Now, let us try picking out the sentences that are examples of alliteration. Shall we pick? Here I am going to give you some examples. You need to tell me which is the alliteration for the example. Shall we? Go ahead. The first one is, what is the instruction is given? Which of the following sentence is an example of alliteration? Let us see. The first one, Harry the hamster was having a happy dream in his hamster house. B, Kathy was as beautiful as a rose. C, I was so excited when I heard the ding dong of the bell. Can you guess children? Shall we see the answer? Yes, A is the right answer. I mean the sentence A is alliteration. Harry the hamster was having a happy dream in his hamster house. Shall we see one more? Now, I do not give you clue, you should identify. Which of the following sentence is an example of alliteration? Yuan was as quick as a cricket when he ran in the race. B. Frankie 
the fish ate supper with Ethel the turtle. Queen Quincy was quiet when the Quintel quit quickly. Here, which can be the alliteration, children? Can you guess? Think. Yes, of course, children. Which is the answer? Queen Quincy was quiet when Quintel quit quickly. Look at that Q sound has been repeated more than a two times and that is placed closely. Then now try to write your own examples of alliteration. Will you do it at home? Don't miss it. Try to write your own examples of alliteration and show to your teachers. Okay, good. Now we have one more literary devices that is repetition. When do we use this repetition? Let us see what is this repetition and when to use and some examples in this video. Shall we watch this video? Here it goes. Now in this poem also we have some repetition. See the repetition is used in the entire poem you can see in the stanza 1 to the stanza 5 that repetition has been used. Let us see uh, the word remember is mentioned in stanza 1 and repeated 4 times in the poem and uh, remember no men are strange, no countries foreign is mentioned in stanza 1 and repeated in stanza 5. Yes children let us answer now. Are you all ready? We have recited the poem, we have analyzed the poem, we got the new words and totally we have come across everything about this poem. Let us see. First question children, the poet who composed the poem, no men are foreign is. Yes, please can you guess? James Kirkup. According to the poet, no men are dash. Can you guess? foreign. Stop hate. What might be the question then? According to the poet, hating others means hating ourselves. Right children? Yes. Here is the fourth question. The weapons of war dash the earth. Defile. Isn't it? We should not defile this earth. We can win over the strengths of the opponents with what? Can you guess? Love, you have done a wonderful job. Clap yourself children. Everybody clap yourself because you have done a wonderful job. Here, some assignment for you. See, he is ready to take the assignment. Are you all ready to take the assignment? Yes. Take up the first question. How do you think we are all treated alike by nature? Please write down the first question. Second one is briefly describe how a war spoils everything. And summarize the poem, no men are foreign in not more than 80 to 100 words. Please jot down all these three questions and write them and show to your subject teacher without fail. Will you do it children? Yes, my dear children. For more information, download the Diksha portal. There you will get many sources for this poem. So thank you once again. See you in the next class as I am Balaji from Hiriyur Taluk, Chitradurga district. Thank you one and all.